hội đặc biệt để lắng nghe chia sẻ của giáo sư Petro, cố vấn đặc biệt của chương trình Thầy Cô Chúng Ta Đã Thay Đổi với chủ đề Giáo viên của tương lai. Với rất nhiều các giải pháp thực tế và tích cực để giải tỏa áp lực và đổi mới giáo viên, giáo sư Petro là chuyên gia giáo dục nổi tiếng trên thế giới, hiện cung cấp khóa học trực tuyến phổ biến nhất cho giáo viên tại Hàn Quốc. Ông được mời để nói chuyện tại 182 trường đại học và hơn 30.000 giáo viên trên toàn thế giới. Hội thảo Giáo viên của tương lai phát sóng vào lúc 23 giờ ngày 17 tháng 12 năm 2018 trên kênh VTV7 hoặc xem lại trên YouTube VTV7 kênh truyền hình giáo dục quốc gia. Xin chào. Tôi rất vui khi được gặp các bạn. It's wonderful to be here and I really appreciate for invite me to give talks to the future of Vietnam here. I would like to give you my experience as a teacher so that maybe you can take advantage of my experience in teaching. But before I get into the detail, I would like to uh, say that uh, if you ever come to visit Korea, that I would like you to go to, this place is right in the center of Seoul. When I was a very small child going to school, I used to walk this place every day. But way back when I was school ch child, this place looked like that. So in one generation, tremendous change took place. From one of the poorest nations in the world to the one of the most energetic nations in the world. So what do you think happened in one generation? Well, there are several things that we did. The first thing, the first thing is, we built a national consensus on the importance of education which means that we want to invest in people, especially invest on the future of Korea by investing on children. So when we had a war, Korean war and there's a bombing going on, we still had school where people can go and learn. And I call that 3W education, Whoever, whenever, and wherever they could hold education, people went. Then we had something I call 3S learning, where the same age people went to the same school, same place, and the same time. So every place where people live together, we built schools and schools here and there. So we end up with 11,000 schools in Korea. Now we are doing something more. We are doing something called 3A education, where anyone, anytime, any place that they can get education. So from four years old to 40 years old to 80 year old people can go to school. But the school is not a building. School is your computer and smartphone. So we invested in ICT the information, communication, and the technology of it. But you have to be careful. Remember when we were students, teacher gave so much homework and they taught us a lot of information, right? Too much information, so we got tired and we slept. And nowadays, with technology, teachers are giving more information faster. So the most advanced form of smart technology is doing the worst form of education more. I call it the dumbest use of the smart media. So when you invest in ICT, I do not mean just doing more of the same thing faster, but so that we can be more innovative, creative, and 
transformative. What that means is that we can use the technology to do the boring part of education and teaching. So the teachers and students are free to do something more fun and meaningful. Innovation, creation, those are very fun part of education. Quý vị và các bạn đang xem buổi hội thảo Giáo viên của tương lai do Công đoàn Giáo dục Việt Nam và kênh truyền hình Giáo dục Quốc gia VTV7 phối hợp tổ chức. Buổi hội thảo có sự tham gia đặc biệt của giáo sư Bách Châu đến từ Hàn Quốc là cố vấn đặc biệt của chương trình Thầy Cô Chúng Ta Đã Thay Đổi. Trong phần tiếp theo, giáo sư Bách Châu sẽ chia sẻ với chúng ta về tầm quan trọng của sự sáng tạo trong giáo dục. It is very important to be creative. Because look at the map. This is the map that we are all familiar, right? But if I redraw the map according to creativity in people, the map becomes very different. Where is Vietnam? I thought Vietnam was a big country. Poof, disappeared. The countries like the United States, Europe, and Korea and Japan is huge now. So you are now faced with a choice, either to become the producers of creativity or the consumers of creativity. Consuming means you are using other people's creativity. Then you will always be behind. So you have to understand that that used to be a good student. Studying hard, memorizing a lot of information, and studying, studying every day and night as a good student. But now we have a better student. It's no longer a good student. Because I don't care how much she memorizes, and how much she can analyze, and how much she can calculate. She will always be behind artificial intelligence. So the better students are becoming the doctors. Better students are becoming the lawyers. And the better artificial intelligent students are becoming TV anchors. That is robot. So now robots are the doctors, lawyers, and TV announcers. You know, they are taking over. They can memorize one million times better than the best students here. They can analyze and calculate 100 million times faster than you can. Guess which profession is the next profession that artificial intelligent robot will take over? Which one? Can you guess? Doctors, lawyers, all you know, different jobs are taken away by robot, which profession is the next one to go? Are you afraid? They are going to take away your job. Because already, robot teachers is already happening. It's not a science fiction. It's not about long, long away. It's happening now. So you got to invest in things that robot artificial intelligence teachers cannot do. We all have to prepare for the future, which is now. Although I usually taught in college, I also was a, a teacher in junior high school. They are my students. Every time I see them, I get so angry, frustrated, and worried. And I used to wake them up. And I used to advise them. I did so many things so that they can learn better from me. But the next day, they sleep again. And my stress goes up and up and up. And that's why I lost my hair. <laughs> so I decided, how can I make my students learn better? How they can become better students? So I went to the library and read books on education, books on psychology, books on counseling. I read many, many, many books. And they were wonderful, wonderful information. A book on attention. 
and it talks about the brain. Brain has many parts, and it talks about uh, you know, attention span and this and that. You teachers have a bad attention. I'm standing here talking about the brain, but you're all looking something else. But what I realize is that if something is moving, if there's a noise, if there is something bright, people's attention automatically go there. So if I talk about theories and analysis, you know, students are going to be focusing on me. They're not going to pay attention to me, but they're going to pay attention to something moving, you know, sounding. What that means is that if there's a student sitting and not paying attention to me, what is really happening is that you know, from all different areas around him, different things are competing for his attention. So if he is not paying attention to me, then I lost in the competition. So after a year, I realized that if a student is sleeping in the classroom, it's the teacher's fault because we lost in the competition of attention. Do you agree? <laughs> but, but nowadays, students are sleeping before I start my lecture. Whose fault is it then? Whose, whose? Teachers? It can't be a teacher's fault because I didn't even start. So it's unfair. So whose fault is it? Whose? The previous teacher's fault. Mm -hmm. The previous teacher make him sleep, so I have no choice. I'm sure when teaching is very difficult, and it's a very difficult job, and I'm sure it's very correct that it is the students who are not good students. Sometimes they, their parents are horrible people. Sometimes the principal is the really bad person. Right? Right? <laughs> Maybe it's the problem with the government, the lack of leadership. It might be all true. It might be all correct. But if we blame other people for the, our difficulties, I might be correct, but no change will take place, and everybody will lose. So although it's a problem that I did not create, I have to do what I can. If everybody think that way and do what each one can, Students take care of what they can. The parents do what they can. Teachers do what they can. The principals do what they can. The government leaders do what they can. Then you will have huge change. <laughs> if we want to change, then we have to have a good understanding of what I want to change. And I said that it is important to be creative. So we want to understand a little bit about creativity. Quý vị và các bạn đang xem buổi hội thảo Giáo viên của tương lai được tổ chức tại trường Đại học Sư phạm Hà Nội 2 với sự tham dự của nhiều giáo viên và sinh viên ngành sư phạm trong và ngoài tỉnh Vĩnh Phúc. Giáo sư Bách Châu vừa chia sẻ về vai trò quan trọng của sự sáng tạo trong giáo dục, đặc biệt là trong giai đoạn hiện nay. Vậy làm thế nào để học sinh có thể sáng tạo? Mời quý vị và các bạn tiếp tục đón xem trong phần tiếp theo ngay sau đây. Creativity is so many things are involved. Too many, too many. So I kind of organize into six important groups. Number one is basic knowledge. In creativity, you also need some knowledge. That's the basic. It's good enough. We need thinking as well, but fuzzy thinking. And we need a sense of curiosity, a sense of adventure. When you are willing to take risk, then there is a chance that you are going to fail. 
A person who fails and say, ah, oh, I give up, will never become creative. You challenge something new, which nobody did it, therefore risk of failure is high, so you can fail, but you have to re-challenge again, and that is called positive thinking. So after you put those five elements, then you have to get rid of two barriers. That's a fear of failure, that every problem has one right answer. That's a closed up mind. All right, then you end up with the empty space where the sixth element will go. So what should be the sixth element? What do you think, sixth? Anybody? You need the basic knowledge, fuzzy thinking, sense of curiosity, sense of adventure, positive thinking, Next one. What's the next one? The final. That's good. That's good. Hmm? Critical thinking. That's good. That's good. Anybody? Emotion. Oh, mm, excellent. No. That empty spot. You leave it empty. <laughs> you don't want to cram more and more stuff inside your student's head. Do you understand? That is called slack. Slack is a space, an ability to accommodate and assimilate new thoughts. That empty slot is the ability to communicate and empathize. You know there are people who are full with his own thinking, right? And they will not listen to you. Or there are people who say, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. I have so many things to do. And they will not share anything with you. Then you are going to end up with a very small creativity. Big creativity is when people share ideas and they communicate and they discuss. We call brainstorming. And that empty space is way that you allow your students to grow and mature. So you allow your students to create their lives. That is the space where they will dream about your future and have the vision for the society and for the future. But sometimes we like that student who is all A student, the best students. That looks like the best students to you? Who passes college entrance examination in the first place? But think about it, think about it. These students know a lot of things but all that person knows is what is already in the textbook, an old information, and someone else's ideas. And I am paying money to receive them. I'm becoming a consumer. On the other side, being creative means that you are dealing with something new. Not other people's, but my own and you learn to be productive. If a student goes through life from kindergarten to high school to, to college for 15, 16, 20 years being a consumer, then after graduating school and going to society, they continue to become consumers not productive member of the society. Creativity in school is not about making things, but teaching children the way to live, way to be productive member of the society, to make contribution to the society. Creativity is way of thinking and way of living. I used to teach in college engineering. So 
30 years ago, I prepared the T-shirts for my students. This is a T-shirt that students are allowed to wear during final examination. It contains all the engineering and science formula that they need. How, how is it written? Upside down? No, no, no. You wear it, you look down, it's right side up. And I say, you don't have to memorize this. You can take a look at anything that you want. All my exams are open notes, open book, open everything. Students are allowed to bring their textbook, their notebook, whatever that they want to bring. Memorizing is no longer a sign of a good student. Every information that you need, you have on your fingertip. So we need something different. And creativity is one of the two things that is needed. I have a question for you. If you see this kind of picture, and students say, me, me, me. What do you think is happening? Why, why is students raising their hand? Maybe teacher asked the question, and students say, me, me, let me answer the question, right? Is that right? Then that classroom is a bad classroom. If this is the best classroom, when we see this kind of thing, me, 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 we need to say, oh, students want to ask me the questions. Answering questions is robots will do it for you. Asking the right question is the beginning of creativity. So we have to make sure that we allow questions in class. That's how you cultivate the sense of curiosity. Then we have to allow mistakes. Instead of punishing students for making mistakes, we need to celebrate if they make mistakes. If they become afraid to make mistakes, they will never try anything new. So in order for that to happen, we have to choose to be positive. Vừa rồi, giáo sư Petro đã chia sẻ những kinh nghiệm của bản thân về các cách thức để khuyến khích và khơi gợi sự sáng tạo trong mỗi học sinh. Để làm được điều này, người giáo viên cần phải thay đổi tư duy và cách giảng dạy truyền thống. Phần tiếp theo ngay sau đây, chúng ta sẽ cùng đi tìm câu trả lời về vai trò của người giáo viên trong tương lai. Take a look. Of the six elements of creativity, two are about thinking. Basic knowledge and thinking is what we call cognitive activities. The remaining four, curiosity, adventure, and slack, and positive mindset, is about emotion. Training students the way they think alone is no longer enough. We have to train our students to use their heart better. And when we put them together, we end up with something called social emotional skills. We need to change the way we teach. The class has to change. The students cannot, should not be passive, should not be consumers of knowledge and we still remain the transmitter of knowledge. We have to make the class interactive and creative, such that there is a good energy, good emotion, and good collaboration. That is very important because the only way that we can be ahead of artificial intelligence is through the collective intelligence. So the teachers have to be not the transmitter of knowledge, but the transmitter of wisdom. This t-shirt was designed to promote the message about creativity and cooperation. So the same information is in the back of the t-shirt. So that the students sitting next to you, behind you, 
also share the information with you. Cooperation. So that everybody can be successful and everybody can be happy. Teachers have to become not the lecturers, but mentors to impart wisdom. It has to be between people. Transmitting knowledge, machines can do better. Transmitting wisdom, only people can do. So that if we learn the skills of social emotional skills and make the classroom where the teachers and students' are hearts are beating, then that will be the best classroom. And the teacher who does that will be the best teacher. I think the VTV7's effort was trying to show you uh, an idea as to how to make that transformation. So I felt greatly honored for having had an opportunity to participate in this effort. We do our part. But the society and the government have to do their part as well. So I believe the society and the government have to invest on teachers. Having a desire alone is not sufficient. Good conditions and environment have to support the change. And it is worthwhile investment because teacher it's not simply the transmitter of information, but it's a transformer. A teacher is an agent of change and is a beacon of hope. I hope you all lead the changes that is taking place in Vietnam and throughout the world. I wish you success and happiness. Thank you. Có thể thấy phần chia sẻ của giáo sư Bách Châu đã giúp ích rất nhiều cho các giáo viên và cả những sinh viên đang theo học ngành sư phạm. Ngay sau đây sẽ là phần trao đổi trực tiếp của giáo sư Bách Châu và các giáo viên cũng như sinh viên có mặt tại buổi hội thảo. I like your presentation very much because it's very useful and attractive for me. Yes, so I have a question for you. How should we do to help teachers? to make motivates for the change of teaching? Thank you for the good question. I'm sure there are many different ways to improve. Uh -huh. I'm going to only mention one way, which I like the most. Many years ago, I happened to shop for ways to teach better. Remember, I, I told you my, my problem. So I was searching for different methods. And I happened to visit the Harvard University's homepage. And it said every year, 200 professors actually videotape their lecture and they f monitor what they do. Have anybody done that yourself? Oh, nobody? If you videotape the way you do your class and look at it, it hurts you so much. It's like going through every day for for whole month without washing your face and without combing your hair because you don't see mirror. So a month later, when you see yourself on the mirror, you will be surprised. Same thing. If you go through teaching without looking at yourself, you might also get shocked when you do that. So it's very difficult thing to do watching yourself on video. So I had a question, why those professors in Harvard University, why are they doing that? They are already number one in the world. They don't have to go through the pains of looking at themselves. They're already on the number one in the world, right? I couldn't understand why. Then one day I realized my question was a stupid question. It's not why they are doing it, they are number one in the world because they are doing it. When you see yourselves, the way you teach in the video, something happens there, and you want to change. So that's the best way, I think.
Any other question? Thank for the presentation. I think it's the useful for not only me, also all of teacher in here, because I think it make me more motivated to train for education. Mm -hmm. So you would like to share about uh, some uh, factor for teacher to have a, a, a happy class and to mm -hmm. student can be uh, a happy student. In my experience, the best way to find happiness is by finding something to be thankful about. It doesn't have to be a big thing, but small things here and there. I am thankful that this morning it looks rainy, but it's really nice. I'm thankful that this talk is almost over. I'm thankful for many good questions. I'm thankful for each one of you for being here with me today, especially those people up there. <laughs> if you every day get into a habit of finding something thankful, after a while, your heart will be filled with thankfulness. You start with, I am thankful for this and for that. Then a bit later, you are thankful, just, just thankful for no reason. My heart is just filled with thankfulness. That's happiness. We can teach our ch children and our students to be thankful, okay? I have a, just have a short question. Uh, you said that uh, students don't have to remember the knowledge which they can, file, they can find on the internet, but students still have to follow some exam of education system. When we ch talk about change, it's not about black and white. I don't mean that you need to change 100% of what you do. Yes, we have to focus on creativity. Yes, we have to focus on human relationships and social emotional skills. But still, students have to learn a lot of information and the basic knowledge. They have to memorize. So what does it mean by change? I will give you an analogy. Cup of water is already full. How do I change this? I do not mean dump the water out and put something new. I don't mean that. Same amount of water, but if I put a teaspoonful of sugar or a teaspoonful of salt, the volume doesn't change, but the taste changes very, very much. It's that kind of change I'm talking about. I'm not saying get rid of everything that you do. A little bit change here and there will change the educational experience of students. Don't think just simply in terms of curriculum content. Do you follow me? Yeah. Content might be almost the same, but the experience changes, and that is the change I want you to think about, okay?